a bird? Is it a plane? No, you silly little idiots. It's 101 Facts. I'm Sam, and I'm here to welcome you once again to this super de duper edition of 101 Facts. This time, we're covering the Man of Steel, the hero whose powers you wish you could have, and the man you'd hope to see if you were being mugged in an alleyway by some wrong un. No, not Jason Statham, though that's perfectly valid. I'm talking Superman. But how did Superman take down the KKK? How and why did Superman rebuild the Great Wall of China using just his eyes? His eyes are so dreamy. Did I say that out loud? Two out of three of those questions are about to be answered. So make sure you remember to lock up the Fortress of Solitude before you leave and fly through the air wearing your big red fact pants. This is 101 Facts About Superman. Number one. Our first peek at the man in blue, red, and a little bit of yellow came in June 1938, when he debuted in Action Comics number one. Number two. The Kryptonian Kal-El was created right out of the brains of writer Jerry Siegel and artist Joe Shuster. Number three. Sorry to get serious on you so quickly, but on June 2nd, 1932, Jerry Siegel's dad died during a robbery in which a gun was fired. Comic book historian Jared Jones speculates that the invention of the bulletproof superhero was a result of this tragedy. Number four. Soups could have been very different to the flying boy scout we now know and love. In 1933, Jerry Siegel wrote a short story in which Superman was a bald villain. Sound familiar? Who got psychic powers from an experimental drug and used them for pure evil. Number five. But Jerry and Joe sold the rights of Superman for just $130 to Detective Comics later in 1938. Number six. In 2014, a near mint condition issue of the first comic book sold for a record $3.2 million, but only cost 10 cents in 1938. Number seven. Do you know what this is? Of course you do, you clicked on a Superman video. But according to Zack Snyder, Superman's S symbol is the world's second most recognized symbol after the cross. Number eight. Golden Age Superman initially did not have his expansive and rather ridiculous list of superpowers, and was only able to run faster than a speeding bullet, he was only more powerful than a locomotive, and he was only able to jump over a tall building in one bound. Pfft, is that it? I can do that after two Red Bulls and a Turkish Delight. Number nine. Superman's famous quote about the truth and justice in the American way wasn't actually used until the radio series and was broadcast halfway through the middle of World War II. Number 10. Over the years, Superman has had some really rather weird powers, including super hypnosis, super ventriloquism, and super breath. I swear someone on my bus this morning had that last one. Number 11. But probably the weirdest thing he can do is materialize his own image, imbued with his superpowers of course, from his palms. Or, to put it another way, shoot superpowered midgets out of his hands. <laughs> wow. Think about how much that would have improved Man of Steel. Number 12. Without everybody's warm friend, the sun, Superman would essentially just be man. Like a muscular solar panel, he draws his powers from the sun and charges his cells, giving him his superpowers. Number 13. Superman doesn't actually need to chow down his super jaws onto anything to eat, or breathe to survive. He just does both out of habit and because he likes to. It's just like how I don't need to send Jennifer Lawrence handwritten love letters every day, but now it's just in my rhythm. Number 14! Have you ever wondered what it's like to take a bite out of Superman? Well, two things can happen. Because of Superman's light cells, you could explode due to the heat, or it could taste bloody horrible because he's an alien. Oh, I forgot to say, you need to be a vampire for both of those things to happen. Number 15. In case, like Batman, you ever need to fight him, Superman is thought to have four major weaknesses. They are red sun radiation, magic, high-pitched noises, and the songs of 1970s rock band Kansas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That last one's kryptonite. Number 16. 
Kryptonites didn't actually start in the comic books and debuted on the radio instead in 1943. The show needed an excuse for the voice actor of Superman to take a break. So Superman was trapped with the radioactive rock and a replacement just groaned for several episodes until the actor came back from holiday. Number 17. On the same radio series, Superman fought those evil bellends the Ku Klux Klan. It revealed all the secrets of the dickhead organisation, including codes and passwords, and as a result, the KKK's influx of recruits decreased massively. All thanks to Kal-El. Number 18. Superman is worthy. That is to say, he's lifted Thor's mighty hammer, Mjolnir, in the comic books. Number 19. Although commonly shown as green, kryptonite appears in many different colours with varying effects. Red kryptonite has an especially weird effect on kryptonians, and over the years has made Superman evil, grow extra limbs, and even turn into a dragon. Not even once, kids. Not even once. Number 20. There's even a variant of pink kryptonite, and in Supergirl Volume 4, number 79, Superman is exposed to it, and it's implied that it temporarily turns him gay. Number 21. Superman was targeted by possibly the biggest bunch of bastards in the world ever, the Nazis, in their propaganda during World War II, as they claimed he poisoned the minds of young Americans. Number 22. In Action Comics number 900, Superman renounces his US citizenship in order to stop being an instrument for the US. Number 23. In a 1970s issue of spin-off comic Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane, Superman turns Lois black for 24 hours. As weird and potentially offensive as that sounds, the comic actually addressed a lot of racial issues in America at the time. Number 24. Speaking of Lois Lane, she's been around since the first comic in 1938. Number 25. She isn't Superman's only flame, though. Lana Lang, Laurie Lamares, Lila LaRoll, Luma Lanai, and now Wonder Woman are just a few of Superman's love interests. Number 26. OMG, is that Clark Kent or Superman? I can't tell because of the glasses. <laughs> what a silly disguise. <laughs> Well, actually, his glasses tint his eyes to be a different colour in the comic book, so actually it does change his appearance a fair bit. Number 27. In 1978, Superman got his first feature film, directed by Richard Donner. Number 28. The film was the most expensive ever made at the time, with a production budget of a super D duper $55 million. The film then grossed around $134 million in America alone. Number 29. Originally, Superman and Superman 2 were being made at the same time, and about 70% of Superman 2 was shot before the decision was made to stop and maybe concentrate on making the first one as best they could before focusing on the second. Number 30. Christopher Reeve got the role of Superman over 200 other actors and was rejected by the producer three times before finally being given the role. So hashtag inspirational. Who wrote that? Number 31. Some actors who were considered to fill the baby blue tights were Muhammad Ali, Al Pacino, James Caan, Steve McQueen, Clint Eastwood and Christopher Walken. Oh my god, that would have been incredible. Lois, I'm here to save your life. Number 32. Young upstarts Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone were both turned down for the role by Marlon Brando, who was giving a helping hand in the casting process. But look where they are today, hashtag inspiration. Who keeps doing this? Clive, is it you? Number 33. Superman was, technically speaking, Darth Vader's Padawan. That is to say that David Prowse, the actor who wore the Darth Vader suit, supervised the two-month training regime that Christopher Reeve had to go through to muscle up for the role. You never know where a helping hand can come from. Hashtag inspiration. Right, Clive, get out. Get out, you're never doing this again. Number 34. Reeve's Superman was voted the greatest sci-fi hero of all time according to a poll back in 2012. I guess they hadn't met Groot yet, who would clearly be number one these days, am I right? Am I right? Number 35. Superman could have almost been a musical. Well, kind of. 
During this romantic and not at all terrifying flight over Metropolis, a musical number called Can You Read My Mind, sung entirely in Lois's head, was considered. Number 36. The 1978 film declared that the audience would believe a man could fly with their special effects. And believe me, at the time, I did. Though this may be more to do with the fact that I wasn't born yet and had no sense of realism or reality. Anyway, before eventually settling on a combination of blue screen, wires and camera trickery, the special effects team experimented with firing a Superman dressed test dummy out of a cannon. Number 37. Apparently, overexpensive fashion is intergalactic. Jor L, Superman's daddy, is wearing a Rolex watch when he places the young Cal L into the spacecraft. Well, either that or Marlon Brando left it on while filming. Who knows? Number 38. Also, Marlon Brando refused to memorise most of his lines for the film, so his words were either on cue cards or hidden on the set, such as on this baby's diaper. Number 39. All the ladies love a man in uniform, something that was witnessed by none other than James Bond himself, Roger Moore. In his autobiography, he says that when Christopher Reeve used to walk through the canteen at the studio in Superman's outfit, all the girls swooned. But they didn't react in any way when he was dressed as Clark Kent. Number 40. The original script intended to end on a cliffhanger, with Superman throwing the missile that would eventually crack the Phantom Zone and release Zod and Company, starting Superman 2. Number 1d4. Not... Speaking of Superman 2, the sequel to the critically claimed original hit the big screen in 1980. The meaning of life! Weirdly, Warner Brothers released the film at the end of 1980 in Europe, but waited seven months later to release it in the US of A. Gosh, seven months wait, can you imagine that? Some comic book movie fans burst their spleen in rage if a movie's released even a day early in Europe, let alone seven months. Number 43. Superman's nemesis is actually his own father. Dun dun dun. Again, kinda. Actor Terence Stamp, who played General Zod, actually played the voice of Jor L in the TV show Smallville. Number 44. What the, what the hell was happening here? Number 45. Another strange and admittedly morally troubling power that's displayed by Superman is the Super Amnesia Kiss. This had to be done as they originally wanted to use the travel back in time around the world technique, but this was already used in Superman 1. Number 46. Also during this scene, there's Turkish on the whiteboard in the background. This translates to, there can't be anything better, and symbolises Superman sacrificing the life he could have had with her while wiping Lois's memory. Aww. Number 47. In one take of Lois Lane punching Kryptonian Ursa right in the kisser, Lois actor Sarah Douglas accidentally KO'd her the F out. Number 48. Moving on to Superman 3, the third instalment came out in 1983, the same year as Superman celebrated his 45th anniversary. Number 49. The original title of the film was to be Superman vs. Superman but producers of brutal wrestling film Kramer vs. Kramer threatened a lawsuit. Wait, that's not what Kramer vs. Kramer is about? Number 50! The film cost 39 million of the finest American dollars to make, and pulled in double that amount at the box office. Number 51! Richard Pryor is said to have got the role for the film after expressing his desire to be in a Superman movie on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Number 52! Superman 3 wasn't exactly considered super by some, as he got nominated for two Razzie Awards. For Worst Supporting Actor for Richard Pryor, and Worst Musical Score. Oh dear. Number 53. Richard Pryor's character steals half a cent from every employee. As he earns $85,000 every time, that must mean the company he's robbing from employs 17 million people. Number 54. It took three months for Pinewood Studios to build the ski slope outside Ross Webster's penthouse, along with 17 tonnes of salt instead of snow. It's worth reminding you though, you shouldn't eat yellow salt either, okay? No on the yellow salt. Number 55. If you want to make your own kryptonite, listen up Bruce Wayne, 
You'll need an intense heat fusion with plutonium, tantalium, xenon, promethium, dialium, mercury, as well as the little unknown substance. Oh, sorry, that's not really very helpful, is it? Number 56. Christopher Reeve donned the cape one final time in the 1987 film Superman IV The Quest for Peace. Number 57. The Quest for Peace was... less than perfect, shall we say. Rotten Tomatoes reflects this and has the film at a rating of just 12%. Number 58. Just before production commenced, the budget for the film was slashed, meaning a lot of it had to be shot in Milton Keynes, England, as New York was too expensive. Don't ever try that switcheroo in your personal life and take your partner to Milton Keynes instead of New York. They will be pissed. I found out the hard way. Number 59. Because of Superman 4's failure, the Canon Group Incorporated had to cancel a planned production of Spider-Man in the mid-1980s. Number 60. Holy Great Wall of China Vision, Superman! Originally, Superman was going to use super speed to fix the wall, but once again, because of the budget, they were forced to just rewind the footage to create the wall-building vision. Number 61. The last line of Superman 4 is Superman saying, See you in 20. To Lex Luthor. This was filmed in 1986, and it would be another 20 years before Supes appeared on the big screen again in Superman Returns. Number 62. But in the meantime, there was a little show called Smallville to keep fans of Kal-El from foaming at the mouth out of withdrawal. It aired from October 2001 all the way until 2011. Number 63. Christopher Reeve made an appearance in the series as Dr. Virgil Swan. This was after his tragic accident, which left him paralysed. Nintendo 64 In 2006, the film series kicked off once again, with the film Superman Returns. Director Brian Singer decided to ignore Superman 3 and 4, and kick off where Superman 2 had left off. Number 65 Brandon Routh got the role in part as he spilt coffee during his interview with Brian Singer. The clumsiness convinced Singer he could play Clark Kent's bumbling character. So, you know what to do for your next job interview now. Number 66. The film nearly took a very different turn though. Tim Burton was almost in charge and he was going to cast Nicolas Cage as Superman. That would have been insane! Why didn't that happen? Number 67. The film was originally meant to see Zod reprise a role in the modern era, but Singer was only willing to let Jude Law play the role, and when he told Singer to Zod off, he was taken out of the script. Number 68. Brandon Routh had to pump iron and stack on 20 pounds for the role. Number 69. Miller skin was the cloth used for the material for Superman's suit. But like a good pair of jeans or a balaclava, it restricts movement when new and gets a bit saggy when it's used too much. As a result, 80 suits, 100 capes, 30 boots and 90 belts had to be made for the film. Number 70. Some conniving pranksters managed to steal walkie-talkies from the set of the movie and started to cause chaos, yelling cut and action randomly. It nearly caused serious injury during the Mustang car jumping scene. Number 71. Superman's sea-based pal Aquaman makes an appearance in this film. Okay, yes, it's on Jason's pyjamas, but it's still an appearance, okay? Get off my back. Number 72. Batman's crime-ridden city, Gotham, also gets a name drop right here. Or reports of flooding in from Metropolis, Houston, Gotham, and as well. Number 73. The filming took place in Australia, and to replicate the Kent farm, a seven-kilometre road was created, and 15 hectares of corn were planted. Number 74. This scene in which Superman lifts a car above his head is a direct reference to a comic book cover. Number 75. During filming, Kevin Spacey went a bit mental and would drive around in his golden cart, which he called Lex's Superbuster, screaming, Superman must die, from a megaphone while dragging around a stuffed Superman doll behind him. Is Kevin okay? Someone, someone should check he's alright. He sounds like he's lost it. Number 76. Richard Branson makes a cameo in Superman Returns, appearing as a space shuttle engineer. Number 77. Seven. 
If you want some hot Lexon Soups action in this film, then you may have been renting the wrong one, but also be prepared to wait. It takes 112 minutes of screen time before Lex Luthor and Superman are eventually in the same scene together. Number 78. It took 14 weeks to construct the miniature train set in the film, and it features 280 meters of track. And I want it. Please, someone get it for me. It's really cool. I'll be good. Number 79. Why doesn't Superman just charge someone to literally pick them up from somewhere and literally drop them off somewhere? I'd pay $100 for that kind of service. Number 80. The truck that Martha drives in the opening scene is the exact same truck used in the first movie. Look at that mother go. Why did you send to me? I said mother trucker. She's his mother and she's driving a truck. Gosh. Number 81. In January 2011, Henry Cavill was cast as Kal-El for Man of Steel. He was cast seven years earlier by J.J. Abrams for a film named Superman Flyby that, ironically, never got off the ground. Number 82. Cavill is the first non-American to play the role of Superman. Number 83. The darker, grittier version of the film came out of a discussion with Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer while discussing The Dark Knight Rises. David S. Goyer would go on to write Man of Steel and Christopher Nolan would produce it. Number 84. The film grossed $668 million worldwide. That's just under the original Superman and Superman Returns combined. Number 85. It's also the film that's kicking off the DC Extended Universe, Warner Brothers version of a shared cinematic universe with multiple crisscrossing characters and intertwining plots, a model made popular by Marvel Studios. Number 86. The wickedly talented Amy Adams auditioned for the role of Lois Lane for Superman Returns, but didn't get to play her until Man of Steel. Number 87. Somewhat unsurprisingly, Henry Cavill had to buff up for the role. He also refused to take steroids or have CGI touch-ups. <laughs> CGI touch-up. It sounds like something you ask for in a dodgy nightclub. Number 88. The film premiered in June 2013, the 75th anniversary of Superman. Wow, happy birthday, soups. You don't look a day over 74, old chap. Number 89. Man of Steel was the first film not to incorporate the iconic Superman theme created by John Williams. Number 90. There's a spoiled child's pantry worth of Easter eggs in Man of Steel. A Be Calm and Cool Batman poster can be seen in this office, and Lex Luthor billboards can be seen in the film too, if you've got your magnified specs on. Number 91. Superman apparently can't have a dad that hasn't been Robin Hood at some point. Kevin Costner was in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Russell Crowe starred in the 2010 remake Robin Hood. Number 92. Hey, don't I recognise this guy from somewhere? Oh yes, it's Aaron Smolinski. He's the baby who lifts up the car in the first Superman, and the boy by the photo booth in Superman 3. Number 93. The sequel for the film, Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice, is scheduled for release on March 25th, 2016. Number 94. Batman and Superman are both in it. I know, right? Who'd have thunk it? Then there's also Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Aquaman all supposedly making appearances. Number 95. Wonder Woman is a real threat to Supes, by the way, because her sword is magic, and Superman ain't good at all with magic. Number 96. The first time Batman and Superman appeared at the same time was in the summer of 1941 in the, arrogantly titled, World's Best Comic Number 1. Number 97. Superman would be really, really good at demolition. Knock it! Number 98. Superman has had quotes placed onto his suit from Joseph Campbell. Where we thought to stand alone we will be with all the world, it's translated into Kryptonian and placed across the S, cuffs, belt and bicep of his suit. Number 99. Batman should really look where he's going. Superman is neither a bird nor a plane. Number 101. In 2002, 
Andrew Kevin Walker submitted a Batman vs Superman script to Warner Brothers. In it, Commissioner Gordon, Dick Grayson and Alfred would all be dead, Batman would be retired and Clark Kent would be divorced. Jeez, that's like a film version of a Radiohead song. That was 101 facts about Superman, and I don't know about you, but I had a lovely time. If you want more videos like Lex Luthor really wants some kryptonite or perhaps a wig, then click on subscribe right now to get some, mother factors. Why not also check out Couch Tomatoes video 24 Reasons All Comic Book Origin Movies Are The Same. Ooh, that'll provoke a reaction in some of you. It's a corker though, so go on over and say that I sent you. Well, crikey, Superman, eh? And he's fighting Batman too. That'd be a Clash of the Titans right there. It reminds me of when I was at school and the older kids made me fight pigeons. I was a bit like Batman in a way. I was the underdog who was fighting against someone who could fly and who was a lot stronger than I was. Lots of peck bruises from those days. Lots of horrible, haunting memories. Hopefully Batman will win in the film so those schoolboy memories of me losing these fights don't come back. I'll need so much more therapy. I'm off to pre-order my tickets. Goodbye!